Mina, Kanbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Just read 1 Samuel 23, a very interesting message came to my mind as I read this chapter. And this involves hearing from the Lord and hearing the voice of the Lord. Important stuff, especially um, as believers in Christ. I do believe that we currently, today, can hear the voice of the Lord, can receive direct guidance from Him for our current lives, not just a general guideline as given in the Word of God, but specific guidance that He can speak to us just like He did to the people in the Old and New Testaments. And I'm going to cover a few of those guidelines today because here we have a juxtaposition, two men who both thought that they were on God's side. David and Saul once again going at it. I'm going to start with 1 Samuel, all this is going to be in chapter 23. Verse 7, And Saul was told that David had gone to Cala. So Saul said, God has delivered him into my hand, for he has shut himself in my inn by entering a town that has gates and bars. Then Saul called all the people together for war to go down to Cala to besiege David and his men. When David knew that Saul plotted evil against him, he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the ephod here. Then David said, O Lord God of Israel, your servant has certainly heard that Saul seeks to come to Cala to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Cala deliver me into his hand? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? O Lord God of Israel, I pray, tell your servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. Then David said, Will the men of Cala deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will deliver you. So David and his men, about six hundred, arose and departed from Cala and went wherever they could go. Then it was told Saul that David had escaped from Cala, so he halted the expedition. And then moving down to verse, um, let's go down to verse 19 to give some backstory. Then the Ziphites came up to Saul at Gibeah, so we've skipped forward a little bit, saying, Is David not hiding with us in strongholds in the woods, in the hill of Hachila, which is on the south of Jeshimon? Now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of your soul to come down, and our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hand. And Saul said, Blessed are you of the Lord, for you have compassion on me. And I'll stop there. Few key notes to know whether or not you're hearing from God. Now, now here we have a definite story. The one who heard from God, David, and the one who did not, Saul. It's very clear, as hindsight often is very, very clear, who was right and who was wrong. But what about here in the moment? What about right now? A few quick tips to give you are, one, where is your heart with the Lord? Saul was not living for God. David was. Saul was living for himself. David was living for the will of God. Where is your heart? Are you really living for God? Are you living full out for God? Or is there a part of your heart that you haven't surrendered to God yet? God can talk to you regardless, just as Saul a few chapters ago prophesied, and the spirit of prophecy came on him, despite the fact that he was totally against God in hunting um, David's life. So, the spirit of God can come on you. That doesn't mean you're living for God. That doesn't mean your heart is right with God. There, that's a key part in hearing from him accurately and correctly. Point number two, what have people spoken into your life? Have people spoken that the Lord is with you, and that the Lord um, has blessed you, and the, these people are being reliable, godly people, people you know you can go to because they've submitted to God, they've had a life that shows that they live for God, that they love God, or are they just yes men, like, oh yeah, God's definitely for you, of course he's blessing you, he loves you, and not really giving thought to your particular circumstances, and they're not probably not the type of people who'd rebuke you when you were wrong. You can't trust those type of men or women. The type of people you want to trust who, who can speak into your life are people like Samuel, people who lived for God, people who had reliably heard from him in the past, and you knew you could count on them. And he said to Saul, the Lord's departed from you. And he went to David and said, you're going to be the new king one day. What are the people around you saying, the people that are reliable around you saying in regards to your life and your walk with the Lord? And three, the manner from which you're hearing from God. Saul assumed, because of the circumstances surrounding him, that God was behind those circumstances. A lot of Christians do that, and that's very, very dangerous. You can't just assume because of certain circumstances God is doing this or God is doing that. Um, he assumed twice, once when David was at Cala, and the other time when the Ziphites had reported to Saul that David was with them. 
David said, bring the ephod here. The ephod was a way of communicating with the Lord in Old Testament times. He went to the source. Nowadays, what we have is this right here. We have the Word of God. You want to hear from God? Read His Word. God can use this Word, which speaks about you know, generally how you should live your life and how to live this life for Him. He can speak to you very specific things to you, your heart, things you need to do, things you need to repent of, even callings on your whole life directly from this word. Um, like an example, you can read a story of someone who did something for the Lord and just hits you so strong. It's just like, oh my gosh, that speaks to me so loud. There's, it's, I'm not going to swear to it. And you might want to rely on, you might want to rely on, are you living for God? What are the people that definitely serve God and hear him around you say in regards to you? But when you go to the word of God and something speaks to you, this is his word. This is God's love letter to you. If something in this just hits you strong, there is a good possibility. You know, back it up. In the mouth of two or three testimonies, let everything be confirmed. But there's a very good possibility that that may not just be you like, man, I love this story. That may be God himself saying, hey, son, daughter, this is what I want for you in your life. And these are three ways that you can begin to hear from the Lord in a reliable fashion and not a in a presumptive, rebellious fashion. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.